One of a Kind with Rob Van Dam is recorded in front of a live studio audience. Oh, heck yeah. Oh, heck yeah. It's One of a Kind with RVD. I'm Dominic D'Angelo, OneTrueSportTV.com, on RVD's YouTube at The Real RVD. Guys, I mean, you're not going to believe it who is here with me today for this Is show. it Kevin Nash? Is it Kevin Nash? No. It's Rob Van Dam. Oh, I get those guys mixed up all the time. All the time. Those Michigan boys. Uh, Didn't you used to wrestle as Oz, Rob? Or am I mistaken? Vinny Vegas. Vinny. Oh, that's it. That's it. Okay. Uh, hey, we're live here, though, uh, on the YouTube channels. So, with some shout outs. What to- was, was John Travolta's character's name in Pulp, F- Pulp Fiction? Vinny Vega? Vinny Vega. Correct. I, yeah. I never like made that connection before. Is that what that's from? I guess that's maybe. A, wow. You might which one was first? I don't even. I'm mean, not Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction. First, no, I think Pulp Fiction came ago. after. Because because Vinny Vegas was WCW, so he was 1992-ish, and then Pulp yeah. Fiction I think was 94. Correct me if I'm wrong, chat. Uh, so John Travolta was copying Kevin Nash. How about that? I just Maybe. remember that that when he introduces himself to Uma Thurman and. She says back to him in his deep voice, Vinny Vega, or something like that, you know. Yeah. So, something about, like, she says his voice, like, oh, I'll show back to him. And I was like, damn, wasn't that the same name? I wrestled Vinny Vegas, you know. It was my first loss in WCW. Really? That was your first? I did not know that. Wow. I was undefeated, bro, and you stopped that. And I haven't forgot that. He's coming for you, Kev. Robbie V is on the I'm hunt. I'm coming hard. Mm-hmm. You seen that Brock video? I'm coming. I'm coming hard. Wait, no. What was this? Oh, there's a video of uh, a whole bunch of wrestler promos where they cut out lines like that. <laughs> sound sound hilarious out of context. Yeah. Probably sounded pretty funny even in context. Like, <laughs> really? That's how, you know, where they, I'm going to fuck you in your ass. It's all, <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It's pretty funny. Uh, when you started... And like kind of doing the promo stuff and felt like, did you felt like you needed to do like the yelling kind of thing or did it, did you kind of already knew that wasn't your bag and stuff like that when you were doing it? Um, that is a mighty fair question. Oh my God. I got two ashtrays. Hey now. Um, I don't know. I doubt, I doubt, I, I, I think probably, I mean, I was uncomfortable as, as hell trying to do the promos when I started out and I can't imagine, I, I mean, yelling would have made me even more uncomfortable because I'm just young and green in a room full of veterans and watching them do their thing, you know, and they seem to know what they want to say. And, uh, and they go, they go up there and they say it. I don't know if it's drawing money or not, but I know that's the goal. And then here I am like, how am I going to, how am I going to answer this question about, how am I looking forward to Friday night? How am I going to answer that in a way that's going to sell tickets? And and how am I going to answer that in a way that doesn't make me sound like a butthole? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, I, there's no way I would have just rah, broke into an Ultimate Warrior promo. I, I'm sure, you know, I, I was like, um, could you look, you know, like, what are my strengths? Like, everyone has what they think are interesting about themselves based on uh, external stimuli right so it's mm-hmm. like usually people pop when i when i do this so i'm going to do it and they bend their elbow the wrong way or whatever you know because they're used to getting a reaction from it that's their thing i i think that's probably true um in a lot of cases such as this i probably wanted to show my dimples you know hey i'm a what do they call the um fucking you know white meat? I'm I'm a white meat baby face from Battle Creek, Michigan, and I came all the way down here to get in the ring on Friday because I love this city. What's the city? Oh, I love Dalton, Georgia, and 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 I came all the way down. And just wait till you see me on Friday. You'll see what I'm talking about. I eat frosted flakes from Battle Creek. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. No, there's no way I would have yelled. Uh, I mean, even when they directed me to yell later, it was still weird. Yeah. I don't know if anyone actually did, but it would have been weird. Yeah, been weird. No, the way, like, I mean, you really found the groove in ECW, obviously. And, that, like, it just being like, like we talked about with uh, the Mike Awesome confrontation and stuff in the ring. Yeah, I watched that today. I just watched it a couple hours ago for the first time with the sound on. I don't remember any of that happening. No, you know, really? 
I was like, oh, he does touch me. And then I was like, yeah, I remember Dom said that he power bombed me. Boom, he just did. And then kept going. And Adam, Sabu and him teamed up on me, both put me through the table. Don't remember any of that shit. Man, yeah. It, just a wild that. atmosphere that was, too. Such a wild atmosphere. Really, really cool. It like, took me right back to watching it back in the, when I was like, it was TNN, I think, back then. Yeah. It, but, I, yeah. I mean, it was cool. But it also, I mean, I'm, I'm a... I'm a I'm a, I'm a a critic, you know, that gives unwanted advice when I say this. But personally, I get tired of the cliche right here, right fucking now. Like everyone, can, you can say that with me because you know that's what I'm gonna say because you've heard it 18 million times. You know, it's like that's like one of those uh, cliche things. We, you know, what's coming as soon as they say right here. You know, like everyone, it's like such an uh, easy pop. But it worked there and it felt organic and shit. But at the same time, um, that was just one thing that I picked out critiquing it. And it was probably both of us doing it. I don't know. But, um, you know, at least back then it wasn't done as much as it has been now. And that's yeah. true. with Actually, that's true with everything. <laughs> and, and with you, too, when you did it, I mean, it was your own spin, too. Like, oh, this is RVD's version of right here. I got time to burn. I got time to burn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I thought it was interesting. You mentioned this. Uh, this was, like, weeks ago on the episode. But you talked about, I think you were talking about Paul Heyman's induction speech. And you were saying you were watching it, but you were watching it from a promo standpoint of it all and kind of assessing it from that regard. And I thought that was really interesting to look at it from that way. Like, hey, I'm analyzing it almost like a match, but like a Well, yeah, it's the same thing. I mean, I can't can't watch wrestling just like a fan anymore. You know, Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even know how to, how to do that because I'm watching, you know, people work doing the same job that I do and, and uh, seeing them make, choices and knowing when and where they're making these choices that I may agree or disagree with. And, and so, yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, it was, that's what, um, that's what a Hall of Fame speech is basically is a promo, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so anytime you do see someone cut a promo, then you can, you automatically go into like analytical mode kind of thing where you're just like, okay, this is what he or she is missing or maybe what they didn't hit upon. They could have done this a little bit better or something like that instead of thinking like, well, I mean, like, you know, the first level is like, was it good or not? Right. Mm-hmm. And that's the same thing that any fan, um, anybody watching, you know, would, would you, you know, might be like, wow, you know, and how do you judge if it's good or not? Was it compelling? Did it engage you? If so, then automatically you got to start giving it credit. You know, if you were into it then you can't say it sucked too bad. You know, uh, even without trying to tear everything apart, you know, just uh, on the uh, basic level. And, of course, basic thinkers, you guys don't go past that anyway. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's it. Hey, by the way, uh, thank you to artist formerly known as Seth for the opening song again. Oh, yes. We should That's give great. that guy credit. I love that song. Give, give. Now, it reminds me, now it reminds me of our um, recent visit to Hawaii that was, like, so fun. Like, it... Whenever every time I hear it, it brings back those vibes, and I love Hawaii. Like, it's like I don't know. The energy there is 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 different than anywhere else that I've been. I don't even know how to describe it. Jamaica too. It's a lot of it is the weather, but it's also the music. You know, that's always playing. It seems like the trees are playing music. You know, and and it's that kind of a feel always. And uh, and when we were in uh, Hawaii a few months ago. I was uh, shrooming the whole time, too, and so it makes me think of that, which, by the way, a couple of weeks ago, I was talking about that, I'm, that I was starting to take the uh, um, lion's mane, and I uh, don't really have any, any news to report w- with it yet, you know what I mean? So I don't know, and, I, and I've been seeing a lot of videos that say that it's um, not proven to work uh, recently, too, whereas everything before was like, that is the shit. But anyway, I'm optimistic. But point is, uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, I, I tried some of that. Lions, man. Someone gave me a couple of other shrooms, you know, and pill form. And I took that. And uh, I don't know what else I took. But uh, uh, during our radiology, the shrooms started kicking. So go back and watch that and see if you can pick out. <laughs> right when uh, I was talking, and all of a sudden, I was just like, um, 
Do I have notes? Uh, I don't want to do this anymore. Can we wrap this up? You didn't even... If you didn't say anything to me, I wouldn't even notice, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, oh, he wrote notes down? Oh, that's cool. <laughs> that, tells, that tells me how much uh, I'm normally babbling, not making any sense, because that's what I felt like afterwards. I was like, oh, I got some stuff written down I was going to talk about, but whatever. Huh? <laughs> but what? Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's uh, how much sense I normally make. Guys, if you want to get a question in, uh, you can always just ask a question. I'll try to yeah, make it chat. down. But you can also do Super Chat, and that helps out the show. That helps out One True Sport and uh, gets a little buzz going. Uh, like Liam Evans here, uh, One True Sport member. He says, R hey, RVD, do you have any good yes, rhino oh, stories? Liam. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> hey there. Do you have any good rhino stories? He's going to be at a show in my hometown in October in Wales, UK. Looking forward to meeting the man beast. Any good rhino stories, Rob? Mm, man, that's a good question. I've been around rhino quite a bit great guy when he broke in you know sabu was uh he had sabu's approval he was like no he's he's a good guy and he's uh from detroit you know and uh and so you know we're we're gonna do what we can for him and um liked him right away he's a super nice guy i think everyone uh i think everybody would have to agree because he's a nice guy he always tries to make you laugh and he's tried to try to be funny um the one thing that sticks out in my mind is when i turned heel in tna on my last run when uh, katie was managing me then um well first off when they suggested that to me you know that uh, they were thinking about turning me heel i, I was feeling like but i I, I thought I was like the most over, you know, like <laughs> guy. I was like, I thought you do that, like when stuff's getting stale and you, you need something new. Oh, oh, we are there. Oh, um, yeah, we could try it, you know. And I was like, I'm, I'm interested. Um, Rhino was my partner. We were both heels. No, we we're both baby faces, I guess. Whatever. I don't know. I just remember that. I was turning on him and it was at a point. Yeah, we must have been baby faces because it got the desired boo. And um, uh, Ron, I don't know who we were against. It feels like it was Dreamer, if that would make sense. But uh, I don't remember the exact angle. But Ryan was over in the corner doing his, you know, get up, get up, so I can do a running spear at you that's different than Goldberg or Edge because I'm a rhinoceros and that makes it different. And then um, and he was like doing that, and I was in the other corner. Um, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, bam! I hit him with this sidekick in the face, boom! And nobody expected it. I think it was uh, really well timed to get that surprise reaction. But um, that was stiff as fuck. And I always <laughs> felt bad because I really like Rhino. Um, but I really, and and he even beforehand, you know, like was. Um, he was wanting to boom, you know, take it. He actually said, you know, try to control that because I want to be able to really sell it good and go and like dive through the ropes. Say, oh yeah, yeah, cool, cool, sounds good. And uh, but when I went to do it on the spot, um, I didn't want to look at him. I didn't want to give it away. So I'm like looking around, and I just kind of used my peripheral because I wanted it to be a surprise. I wanted it to be, you know, like a, a, a misdirect kind of um, handling of your attention, if you will, and super fast, too. And so I wasn't really looking at it. I went, bam, you know, and, and then I hit him so hard that um, he was swelled up and he had like a big uh, egg, a big, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, you know, on, on his face that was... What do you want to call it? Um, anyway, it was uh, it was it was nasty and it was bleeding and it was big and swollen up. And he had his he, uh, he had like friends or family there and everything. And afterwards, he's taking pictures with him and he's all swollen up and shit. But um, I always, you know, um, I, that's not the first guy that I've potatoed. But um, you, you know, when it's and it's not intentional and that happens, and of course, you know, he wasn't. He didn't have any hard feelings or anything. Uh, um, but uh, at the same time, when it's someone that's like a really, you know, a sweetheart like him or like Abyss, then I, I, I regret it extra over like, you know, maybe someone that I'm like, 
fuck them, you know. Sometimes, sometimes I might not hold back on purpose, and even if I'm not necessarily trying to fucking hurt somebody, it's like, oh, well, let's be not put as much care into it and see what happens. <laughs> let's know? just have a little fun out there. That's <laughs> man on the spot, you know. <laughs> hey guys, what do you think is the number one most valuable thing in pro wrestling? From a storyline perspective, have to be world titles, right? That's what the whole purpose of pro wrestling is. Winning those championships, being the world champion, everything like that. But you peel back the curtain, there's a little bit more to it. Making money, obviously, is number one. Uh, TV time is number one. And, hey, getting that uh, creativity over is pretty valuable, too. Uh, All those combined really define what makes pro wrestling great. But what is the number two most valuable thing in life? Hmm. I would say time. Time is valuable. I spend a lot of time up in the noggin. I think a lot of us do. And you know what? One thing I don't have to worry about is worrying how I smell. And that's because we at One of a Kind with RVD have Mando. Mando is such a great deodorant. uh, And they have different products that you can do too, that you can go to and check out. Uh, This is the Mount Fuji uh, 72-hour strength. And boy, does it work. And you know what? The thing I really like about it, too, I actually went out yesterday and applied it, and um, it's not overpowering. You know, you have certain deodorants, you have certain sprays, you have other things that really kind of, whoa, knock somebody out. You walk into a club and you're like, holy crap, somebody's got to lighten up on the deodorant, on the cologne, everything like that. But Mando is very undertoned and has a great smell. The Mount Fuji is the one I have. And I also have the body wash. Uh, But they also have deodorant wipes, and they also have a cream that you can do, too. So you can go to shopmando.com and use promo code RVD to get $5 off, like a five-star frog splash, $5 off, which is like 40% off your complete order. So get that free shipping. Go to shopmando.com, use promo code RVD, smell great. Ah, You ever see Kevin Klein on uh, A Fish Called Wanda? That's what he used to do. You'll be doing that, too, when you use Mando. So go to shopmando.com, use promo code RVD, get $5 off your first order. All right, guys, smell good. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. you owe somebody a receipt, you know, from the last one or whatever, but um, but, but that's my, 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 my rhino story, although I'm sure I have a lot more. That's what pops in my head and dominates my brain whenever I think of rhino. I Yeah, I like rhino a lot. I have yet to interview him and would love to do that, but... Um... I think he was a Spark great, you got him. huh? Spark smoke him. Yes, spark him if you got him, guys. Do it, mm-hmm. do it to it. I know some people. I think are already smoking. Um, I liked him too. As the, I bought him, I, he, I know he was late in the run here, but I bought him as a good ECW champion too, like a world champ. I thought he was credible and all that stuff. They built him the right way. I thought when he had the. Yeah, I regretted having to hand over the TV title to him in ECW, of course, because yeah. that. That was not a happy moment in my career after defending the belt for like two years and I and being on that run that was increasingly um getting better. I was getting better, the houses were getting better. It was just an awesome time. The whole company was getting better, and um, you know, I broke my ankle and that kind of sidelined a lot of that action for me in a match with Rhino. And that was the first time I'd been hurt like that during a match. So I kept trying to walk it off and just obviously continued the match. People from my generation would never even think about, you know, oh, timeout. That's like crazy to think of the way the, uh, the mindset that the guys have to be in nowadays to look at it is if you even have that option because you got somebody trying to kill you, trying to beat you, trying to pin you, and are you, you're you're going to forfeit or or you're going to are you tough enough to continue? And that that was just the mindset I was always in. I remember doing the damn backflip off the top for open landing on my broken ankle. I didn't know it was broke. Yeah, I was going to ask. Did you think it was broke or you didn't? No. I thought I kept trying to. Walk, I, I kept thinking I'll be fine until I took my boot off after the match, and then it swelled up, and then all the pain really hit. Oh my! And, and I lucked out. This was in Orlando, Florida, and there was a fucking foot doctor sitting in the crowd that was watching. 
that said, hey, let me take you in my office a few blocks from here and I can take care of you and x-rayed it. Ended up putting me in a cast and everything. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It's like that classic. It's always like in the classic Looney Tunes. Is there a doctor in the house? And this doctor, oh, I'm a doctor. <laughs> exactly. That's <Yeah>. it. <laughs> Exactly like that. Probably didn't even charge me. I don't even. I don't remember that part, but I really doubt it. If I, if he did, Paul would have paid it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so Matty, uh, one of our one true sport members and a big RVD fan, he's always good with the jokes here. This is a good one. Um, hold on, I make sure I have the right one though. Cause okay. Right here. Uh, okay, here it is. Good doobie too. What's Peter Pan's favorite place to eat out? Wendy's. Nice. That's a good nice. One. That is. Uh, wait, there's another good good one he had. I thought I started too. Dang it, Matty. You, you've been hammering out the jokes. I'm losing them. Dang it. I'll have to try to find that later on. But that's a good one. Um. Oh, Rob, you mentioned um being uh, in Hawaii. Uh, and you also had a story about, unfortunately, somebody who just passed away recently, uh, Kevin Sullivan. Uh what a mind for the business holy smokes and um you know really sad situation uh but man he was the impact he left on wrestling it's just it can it'll continue on forever because of, of all the neat stuff that he was able to do and cr- come up with creative ways to convey villains and baby faces and all that stuff yeah and, and he really had a mind for the business which a lot of wrestlers don't necessarily you know some some of the wrestlers are just talent and that's all they want and and that's fine but some of the other minds are in in like um booking and office skills things like that you know i was trying to think if there was a story i hadn't told about kevin because i've known him for 23 years so that's a long time And, and 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 i'd imagine you know that this would be a, a time to you know where the where where fans could probably see how the business is like a family because you pick out two random dudes RVD Kevin Sullivan and it's like over the last twenty three years I can't imagine how many times I've seen the guy even though we haven't been together on TV that I could think of we haven't been booked um, in 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 that way where you would think of us together and different generations um that's how the business is you know that it's spread out but then when you're in it for so long you really are connected in a lot of ways and you get to um relate to just like a family member relate to each other and i've told the story several times i wrestled kevin in jamaica i was there for my 21st birthday coincidentally on a wrestling tour Two matches. One was Kevin Sullivan, and one was uh, Mark Starr. Fuck Mark Starr. Uh, hey, don't talk about the dead <laughs> that way. There's another. We'll get to that. There's another thing I hear all the time. You know that like is not consistent with our ideology. Let me just say that, and I don't expect everyone to agree, but I'm always telling people. You know, I have these values, and honestly, sometimes it makes me feel kind of pompous. You know, and, and so I'm glad to get feedback that people appreciate it. Cause sometimes I feel like, you know, who am I to, but I'm just sharing my beliefs and hoping it'll help people. I was doing an uh, interview yesterday on, on, and I'll tell you guys about it before it airs total different channel than, than I normally would. But um, I was trying to explain uh, how, uh, how I have these, I'm going all over the place right now. Hold on. Let me, let me think about Kevin and where I was before, <laughs> before I go somewhere and I can't find my way back. I'll get you back on. Okay. So anyway, wrestled him in Jamaica. All right. Here's what, here's what I was going to say. Never hit a woman, no matter what. Really? You know, I said that on the show yesterday and the girls, it was like a, a sex channel kind of interview thing. She's like, so you think it's okay to hit women? And I'm like, I'm just saying there are no absolutes. Hypothetically, if she is stabbing me in the stomach with a knife repeatedly over and over, as he said, you can hit her. I said, okay, I'm just saying. And and likewise, a lot of people say, you don't talk about the dead in a disrespectful manner. Why? If someone was an asshole, when they die, all of a sudden they're a hero? I don't, I don't get behind that logic. You want to say they're not here to defend themselves? I'll agree with that. 
if you're not looking to bring up a challenge that can be defended, and in fact, you're just stating a fact that happened, why should you be prohibited just because that's something you were taught when you were younger uh, before you reprogrammed yourself as an adult? So anyway, fuck Mark Starr. And um, <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Sullivan was a backstage office in a PCW in uh, L.A. recently when I was there. Um, when I lived there and was wrestling uh, for PCW. And that was really cool. I'd see him every show. Um, and he wasn't even part of the show. He was backstage. And I don't know what you would call that, if he was an agent or, or house dad. I don't know. But um, it was always cool to see him, you know, what a what a life he had. And, um, yeah, it's, you know, I'm s- sorry to see him go. I remember last time I – I see him at cons all the time, and last time I saw him seems like it was only like three or four months ago somewhere, and I remember like I didn't realize he was sick. I realized he's looking a little different, but I was like, hey, man, cool. How you been? You know, he looked like he could unload on answering that question and trauma dump, you know, if I really wanted to know. You know, he kind of seemed like, you don't know, motherfucker, I'm dying, you know, and I was just like, oh, um good to see you you know it was like a kind of like a really short thing where i had an idea something was going on and of course arn not arn andrew anderson if you don't know that guy he's one of the most over non-stars that i know of just because all the boys know him and he's always (laughs) he's always been around he's at all the cons him and kevin sullivan were so tight they were always together he's always with greg valentine those guys are really tight and uh, and he's you know he's a, a indie wrestler and I don't know his whole resume but Andrew Anderson was really close with him and he messaged me and said hey man uh, send Kevin some some thoughts please he's you know he's not doing good or whatever and you know I did and then you know like a couple of days later maybe two days later I got the news that he had passed so you know we all have um, we all have our path and. Uh, we're out, you know, it's, it's, it's never really seems like a good time unless you're suicidal, but otherwise, you know, it's usually a shame in this life to lose people, um, especially people we care about because it's just so fucking definite as far as we know. And, um, you know, they don't come back. If you live another 40, 50, 60 years, they're not coming back. So, you know, it, you, what can, can you say? Condolences. And, um, you know, let's uh, let's uh, hope it's a while before we get news like that again. What's up, guys? Just wanted to take a little pause to talk to you about VIA. Now, VIA is such a cool kind of sponsor to have, especially for our VD podcast, because uh, it's got all the kind of relaxing or focused stuff that you kind of need when it comes to like giving you a little bit of boost of energy or hey, a little bit of time to chill out and uh, take it easy. Uh, Via comes in different kind of uh, gummies and stuff like that. Uh, my personal favorite right now is the Flow State. The Flow State is very good. Um, it's got Lion's Mane in there, which I've been a big proponent of recently. And um, it's just CBD and uh, really, really good stuff. Um, I, it kind of gets me right in the zone too. Whether I'm doing the podcast or whether I'm doing some other extra work when it comes to the, the pro wrestling business. So covering the news and what have you. So I uh, very much like Vaya. Uh, it's such a cool, cool packaging. There's so many different ones that they have in here. I'm looking at my box right now. They got High Love, Cloud Nine, Dreams, Revive, Elevate, and Zen in it. It kind of tailors to what you are kind of looking for when it comes to like, hey, this is something I kind of want to get into and, and take a look and, and see what it does for me. And... um. So far, I'm very pleased with the results. And, uh, yeah, my go-to, though, right now, the flow state, baby. So give it a try. Use promo code RVD and uh, check out Via. It's a great product. Uh, we're happy to have them as a sponsor on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. And, like, you know, you see the feedback social media had, a lot of the talent, whether they were, like, colleagues or modern wrestlers today or anything like that he influenced so many different people you look at like even what i and i keep mentioning this on shows is like what the wyatt six or bray wyatt if somebody like that if kevin sullivan 
never did any of that satanic panic stuff where he was like devil and all that stuff would any of that have come to fruition or anything like that it's just like he put his fingerprints all over the place that uh indirectly and some directly too and you know you always hear the story about him holding hulk hogan hostage when uh, for the heel turn that he was going to do at bash at the beach and stuff like that that was his job yeah. and stuff. just like pretty neat that he was all over the place and like just a dude that was so smart to the business but he's also could work in the ring and like he was a stockier dude, shorter dude, but stockier, and he could go up against somebody like Hulk Hogan and make it believable. You know, a memory that just opened up in my brain um, I hadn't thought of in a long time. We're on, we're in Jamaica, and we're on the beach, mm-hmm. and, um, and and Kevin was excited, telling me, two dollar lobsters. You give these guys two dollars, and they go, they go out there, um, they, they walk out there in the water, and they catch one in a net and bring it to you. But I'm not into seafood, so I wasn't that excited about it. But uh, it was just a memory that hit me. And all the other guys were excited. Same thing with weed. Not Kevin, necessarily, but a lot of the other guys were so excited that there was so much weed, and it wasn't anything I was interested in at that time either. Seafood and weed. <laughs> seafood and weed. I know, that's funny. Uh, Nash was just telling a story on his podcast, too, saying that um, he, he, Kevin Sullivan would be hanging out with a buddy and his son, uh, Kevin Nash's late son, uh, Tristan. And like I remember, he remembers Kevin being like, "Hey, you guys want some lobster or anything like that?" And then he would go snorkeling under and literally like pull up a lobster out of the water, like right okay. there. <laughs> Very right? similar story. Which, by the way, I've been uh, having an incredible synchronistic day, so I'm gonna be yeah. watching. Um, yeah, things have been happening today um, since I woke up. As a matter of fact, I woke up and I. I felt the damn pool guy. Like I woke up and I was like, damn, the I got the gate locked. I need to unlock that because the pool guy is going to be here. And then I was like, and then I, I thought, man, let me see if I can just sleep a few more minutes and I'll just unlock it first thing when I get up. I put my head on the pillow and ding dong, it was the pool guy at the gate. And I was like, fuck, I knew it. I just fucking felt him. And, and the day has been pretty consistent like that since. So, um, you know, hopefully some stuff will keep happening here. But also... Also, I felt disconnected almost as much, so it's been really weird because I've also had, like, clumsy moments where I'm dropping stuff and grabbing it, cutting my fingers, and I feel like I'm disconnected. And as I mentioned before, and now it's very aware to me since my sister pointed it out, when stuff like that happens, I take it personally from the universe. And so that's when I say, (laughs) God damn it. I don't think I use that word any other time, but when I feel like, I'm disconnected. Like the universe turned its back on me. I always, that's like habitually, instinctively almost, that's, that's what comes out of my mouth because I know when I'm connected, boom, I get reassurance all day. It's synchronicities, things, everything's working out. And that's how I expect things to go. But, you know, there's always a reason that we knock ourselves off, uh, off track. And I've been on it and off throughout the day. Oh, it's, so it's been a, a busy day, both in those regards. Uh, both positively and negatively. I um, that reminded me. My well, I'm going to Vegas, obviously, for this weekend uh, and for Cauliflower Alley. My goal is to bring uh, the Celestian Prophecy with me, and I'm going to read it while on the trip. So that's uh, that's all yeah, we need for today. Good yeah. luck. Well, I'll tell you, man. If you want, go ahead and skip the first chapter. It's hard. The first chapter loses a lot of people. And it, and it almost lost me because it's just setting everything up and it has characters doing things too early because you're not invested in them. Why do you care that this is happening? Mm-hmm. But as I remember, it's been a long time since I've read it, but basically it's a dude just setting up for all these amazing synchronicities that are about to happen. Like he's, he's supposed to take one flight and he gets bumped and ends up on another. And then there's a person on there that you know, something like that. And and so he ends up going somewhere different. He wasn't even planning on going and, and uncovers the secrets of the fucking universe. You know, the, the manuscript towards spiritual ascension is what he what he finds. And it's um, one by one. So you learn the steps as it goes. I got to find the ninth insight, you know, and it's it's all secret society hidden stuff that they don't want you to find so you know if you can get if you can get past the beginning then uh, i think hopefully you'll find it compelling i'll treat it like breaking bad because i watched like the first six episodes of breaking bad and it was really really slow but then it picked up and it got awesome so i'll just treat it like that yeah 
All right, I'm excited. Yeah, to see. like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I found the joke that Maddie said. So this was really, this really popped me. Why isn't there a pregnant Barbie doll? Because Ken came in a different box. <laughs> you have heard that before. Have you? I, I never heard that one. <laughs> that was a great good one. Thanks, Maddie. Um, we had. I'm, I'm looking at this question real quick about um, have either of us seen the Secrets of Hell's Angels uh, docu series? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, I, I, I just want to answer that real quick. It's easy sure. for me because no, so I can't talk about it because I haven't seen it. Uh, the whole biker um genre is interesting to me but i really don't know that much about it um it's something that i consider sometimes diving into and sometimes the stories do cross reference with mafia and they work together sometimes and and then i'll learn a little bit about it you know besides that uh chuck zito who was the president of the uh, hell's angels um R rochelle new york chapter um he's a a friend but you know all the wrestlers like uh, you know he's a great guy all of us so all of us know him i just went like that because i haven't talked to him in a while so i feel like i'm name dropping but basically um i don't really know that much more to that i can even think of adding to to a conversation i don't know that much about it i like the brian bosworth movie that he did i think it was called stone cold if i remember right really? it was like forever ago oh yeah forever ago well, um, did you see the interview that the my, Mike Franzese, is that his name? Mike Francese. Yeah, Mike Michael Francese. Francese. Yeah, Michael he Francese? says the way he pronounces it is Francese. A lot Francese. of other people. Yeah. yeah. Well, he did an interview with one of the Hell's Angels people. Like, he was one of the head guys. It wasn't Chuck Zito. But no, was, I saw, I didn't click on it, but I did see that thumbnail. That's really interesting i liked i it's like two parts i think if i'm not mistaken but i watched both of them and it was great it was like i and you can definitely see the ties and they tie, kind of talk about the ties with the mafia and and that and does sound other, interesting yeah lifestyle yeah. Kind of thing. by the way not to get too sidetracked but uh something else michael francis did recently that i don't know of like anyone else even thinking of doing this but he interviewed the son of sam really yeah. Wow. Crazy, right? Holy shit. Yeah. Is Sam, that up? Samuel, Samuel Berkowitz or whatever the fuck his name is. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm mispronouncing that, but it sounds just sounds just like that, but I got a couple letters wrong. Damn. Berkowitz. Uh anyway, yeah, it's on it's on his uh YouTube channel, Michael Francis. But I, I was I thought like that, you know, like who's who's going after this guy? Who's who's calling his press agent, you know, and, and, and trying to get him. So I, I also didn't watch that. Um a lot of stuff like that I think I'll watch later because the videos are too long and I'm looking for something that's four minutes or under, and I think I'll watch it later and so you know, and I haven't yet. Yeah, yeah. I see Rob, I'm the opposite usually. If it's like a short video, I'm like, I want to put some headphones in and do work while I'm like listening to something. Yeah, and well, so that's usually how, goes yeah. longer route stuff. That's how I am in the gym, but when I wake yeah. up and my mind just is, is just starting to warm up, I, I need to stimulate it, you know, and I need I, I like to move on and not, you know, be not have a twenty minute build up before uh the fucking uh, guy gets pulled over watching a cop video he's got 20 minutes of him driving down the road yeah finally the lights go on i'm going zoop you know right to the end and by the way people do that on my youtube channel i got these big put an hour into doing an rvd algae episode it's like oh average listen was two minutes that's cool yeah <laughs> as it's like what the fuck <laughs> all five uh all five people that said thumbs up uh must have liked the two minutes they listened to <laughs> you must have really, really enjoyed that. Uh, wanted to give some shout outs to some people. Ashley BM says, Hey again, RVD and job. Thanks for joining us, Ashley. Um, we also have this episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Let's talk about sex, guys. Remember the days when you were always ready to go? Now you can increase your performance and get the extra confidence in bed. Listen up, bluechew.com. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night. 
so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. Mm. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you receive prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online, so no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in the line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. They always say first impressions are important. What about lasting impressions? Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it and do it. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code RVD at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com. Promo code RVD to receive your first month free. Visit Blue Chew for more details and important safety information. And we, RVD and I, thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. Becky in here, she says, Rob, in the world, you always find good people, bad people. I truly believe you are a good person. Thank you so much for doing this. So thank you. Awesome. Very nice of you to say. Well, I appreciate you and yeah. your opinion. Yeah. Yes. Um, we do have a super chat. opinion. Big Rocka, thanks for the 10 bucks. More life, Rob. Always wondered why you were bumped off WrestleMania 19 in 2003. You were so over, and it never made sense to me. Were there any hard feelings over being bumped? RVDology disciple. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Appreciate that, Big Roka. Um, the way I remember it, Kane and I, I think I remember it wrong, because I think I talked to Renee Dupree, one of the guys I talked to, and they said, no, no, no. But I thought it was me and Kane against the um, – the French dude, uh, Rene Dupree's and his, I can't remember Sil what the tag dude. Sylvie Grigny, is that it? Uh, either him or there was someone even before him, right? Like uh, Oh, Rob Conway? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think Rene said that that's not true, but so, you know, one of us might remember the, the matchup wrong, but the way I remember it, we had the match to be on Mania, and then day of got told by jr you guys are going to be not on wrestlemania you're still going to have your match out there you know don't worry it's going to be the same you're going to get paid just like you were at wrestlemania but we're going to show the match on heat and that's because they needed to have enough time for the whole show and i personally took offense with it because they had a segment with the miller light girls and when I was in that competitive spirit, I'm, I'm, you know, comparing myself to them and thinking like the Miller Lite girls coming in here and wrestling in a, in a, in a, a keg of beer. I don't even know what they did. A tub of ice. I don't know. Whatever they did. I felt like that's more important than the tag team championship match, which uh, I think we were champions. I'm not even sure about that. But either way, I think you get it. That's, I felt slighted. I felt like, they were personally insulting us because my value system didn't match theirs. Now, looking at the bigger picture, knowing we all have our own values, if I'm the guy trying to sell the most tickets, what sells more, tits and ass or fucking couple dudes in uh, – in wrestling gear, wrestling a couple other dudes. When I already have 10 other matches that are a couple dudes in wrestling gear, matching a couple other dudes. Um, what's more special that's going to stand out about this show? What what would really hit the culture and society more? This fucking Miller Lite commercials right now are hot. They're like the fucking most played commercials. They played the fucking Super Bowl. They're huge. We're going to fucking play off for that and get that little moment that maybe people remember forever and not going to remember this match from that match or whatever. And you know what? Let's fucking do that. Let's get some tits and ass. I can see it that way now. I didn't feel that way at the time. And we had the match and I was upset. I think I left right after the match. You know, I was never really too good at hiding my feelings. And, uh, and then when I got paid for it, it was the shits. And I went to JR and I was already insulted. You know, you're going to, you know, it was like pouring salt in the wound, as they say. Like you already fucking smacked me in the face and 
made me red. And now, hey, I thought she said we were going to get paid the same as if we were on WrestleMania. I'm like, what the fuck? What is this? And you know what he said? Hmm. You're right. I owe you another 5K. I'll take care of it. Ooh. The fuck is that, right? Does yeah. that mean there was a mistake? Does it mean you see my point and you have the authority to find that money somewhere? Uh, does that mean I should be coming to you every two weeks and telling you I think I should deserve more? I don't know. I didn't know what to make of that. Um, I think that that was one of two times that I remember that I went and said, Hey, uh, I think you owe me more money. And that's, that's what stands out about, uh, being bumped off of WrestleMania 19. So they did pay you though at, at the end of it, like you got good. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. A little weird. That's a little weird. Hey, you know, I'm looking at the WrestleMania 19 card right now too, Rob. I mean, Dad, I did that. But do you, am I on there, me and Kane? You are. You're on the. So you're on the opening. Thing. Not against the. Uh, I want to call them the Rujos. I can't so remember. here, actually, it wasn't either of them. You were oh. going up against Val Venus and Lance Storm. Uh, it, with the Dudley Boys, they were with the Dudley Boys for some reason. But you, uh, they defeated you and Kane for the World Tag Team Championships in seven minutes. So did that. So is that the match that got put on Heat? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it must. Miller Lite girls are there, right? It doesn't. So I'm on the Wikipedia. It doesn't say anything about Miller Lite girls, but I'm sure I'm they just were saying. I'm assuming with you know, I don't like yeah. this. Um, I'm presuming with this information that we're talking about the same uh, match because I don't remember getting bumped off of another WrestleMania, and I know that was early in my WWE career. So, and on my first Mania was 18. So using all that info together, I'm I'm, I'm guessing they're. That we're probably talking uh, about one and the same. By the way, as far as a footnote on that, I, I was always confused about the pay. You know, like how is it like how is it that we're supposed to advance in our career when we don't really have control over so much, so many things that is directly related to our income. And I was always, like, confused by that. I mean, I don't think too many people will argue that uh, RVD was over, but there was a few times where they didn't have uh, an RVD T-shirt in the, in the building. And sometimes that could be, like, really big money. Mm -hmm. Such big money that sometimes they use that, like, as part of, your, part of your deal. I made a return to WWE, and it's like, yeah, you know, uh, we're, we're going to, you know, start, your, we're, we'll go by what you were making when you left before. That's what they did. You know, you're making this much a year. We do 90 days. That's a quarter of a year. Quarter of your downside is this. You know, how about we, we, we go with that for a base? You know, obviously you work more, you make more, you sell more shit, you beat it, but that's your, okay, cool. That sounds fair. Let's do that. So, boom, we go to Africa. They didn't bring the fucking RVD shirt at all. How am I going to make money of selling Rob Van Dam shirts? And it's like, why, you know, it kind of gets me upset even thinking about it a little bit. Yeah, but it was right. like, that happened. And I just remember being there and like complaining to them. And is this an oversight or is that a strategy? Because, of course, you got to have four fucking uh, HBK shirts, even though he's not even on the tour, is that because you literally just sell more of those so it makes more sense? Or you want to sell more of those because that's your agenda? I mean, how can that not be part of it? Because you are causing the end result by not bringing them, not selling them. Therefore, you're not bringing any money down that avenue. So, um I just wanted to say, you know, that that's kind of always been uh, weird for me being there. And when when we brought ECW back in the, on the WWE's platform, um, holy crap, did the pay go down? Oh my god, dude! I'm seriously. Worth, look, look, listen to this. I'm going to be okay. specific here. I'm going to detail this out for you, so that you can understand. I got my guarantee for the whole year. That's why you don't sweat too bad because they'll make up for it at the end if, if that's how the equation um, is. But 
bring ECW back for the first several house shows that we're doing. They're they're running the the same shitholes that ECW used to do. The TV would piggyback SmackDown, right? So it'd be EC, it'd be uh, SmackDown, and then afterwards ECW um, at the arenas. SmackDown would go on their channel, and uh, ECW would be booked for Sci-Fi recorded, but. The house shows when ECW was on its own, they're doing the Ross Raver Ice Gardens. They're doing, <laughs> yeah, literally the and, that, and the shithole, <laughs> all of them, and not advertising them except on the internet. Why not? That's how ECW drew. It was all the smart marks that were on the internet. So the first, this is why I tell you, I sound like I was telling you before the show when I listened to some of the shit, I sound like I'm screaming at it. I am screaming. Why am I screaming at you? You're not. You. I don't feel like I talk like with pushing this much normally, but I guess maybe it's. Uh, I think you're good. All right, cool. Um, so the first several house shows we did with the brand new ECW, uh, even when, you know I had when I was champion. Remember that short period? I'm wrestling Big Show, main event. Everyone knows he's got a multi seven digit deal. If you divide that by the by the uh, <laughs> by the week, in order to reach at least in order to reach at least two mil, that's mm, just under like forty grand a week, you know. So in my mind, I'm, I'm thinking, and I, I can't remember if he had a three million guarantee. Oh, he had, but he had a really big deal, and I and I, I'm not saying I'm big show, but. I'm the guy at these shows. I'm the fucking biggest and most over guy for sure at the ECW shows. As egotistical as that sounds, even if that wasn't a factor, main event, five zero zero. What the fuck? Are you serious? The same, the same that I got paid my first house show match going in in Atlanta against uh, Johnny. Um, Swinger? No, the guy that broke his ass. Oh, Stamboli. Johnny oh, Stamboli. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, first house show in when I came in 2001, I wrestled him and I got 500 bucks. And that was the other time that I went to JR and said, What? What? <laughs> like, I made way more than that before I come here. I, I came here to make less money. And, you know, that and what. I'm guessing it was WrestleMania 19 where two times that I went to JR and said, uh, this ain't right, is it? What the fuck? So there's some insight for you. That's fucking crazy. So you, so after you win the title, you're going on those ECW shit tours and you're getting a $500 payday. At that yeah. Point. And, and so, so what he says to me is like, well, he says there there's not enough there's there's not enough money at the shows to pay everybody. And he says this. He says as it is, I have to take from the SmackDown uh, pool in order to pay you guys what I'm paying you. That's a half Jim Ross because I don't want to go into the stroke face because that's mean and I like him. He's a friend of mine. It just oh, I can't help you. when I'm doing his voice. I can't help it naturally halfway yeah. imitate him. You know, <laughs> I don't mean any harm. Anything yeah. bad. By all. <laughs> I mean, yes. Um, and and then I, he, I wait. What you're you're taking from the SmackDown pool and you're paying the ECW guys? Guess what? That doesn't sound fair either. Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't sound fair to the SmackDown guys, right? Yeah. So. Listen, that's a bunch of horse shit. I will say that if they're putting you on shit tours and be like, "Oh, we'll create internet buzz because that's how ECW do it." Well, you're in, you're part of the WWE machine now. Like, put all the money behind there, get some right. fucking merch out for these guys, and put them in some yeah. bigger arenas. I, I, I can't say this is fact, but I was told that um, they put that they put a ten uh, percent. Uh, advertisement budget on ECW compared to WWE. In other words, $5,000 worth of promotion versus $500, which is really get some posters printed up and pay some kids to put a few up in some windows and then throw the rest in the trash. <laughs> That's so fucked up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's so fucked up. Even at that point where it's like, okay, you know, it's the, like late 2000s or whatever and, you know, time to change, but it's like, dude, fucking... This is WE. You got to do a little bit something more here for, for your talent. 
But this is also, um, you know, um, it's more evidence that weighs in on thoughts of was it really brought back so you could bury it? Or was it brought here to succeed? You know? Like, yeah, the, the deck is kind of stacked against you guys when you're do, doing this little. Well, not to mention, even on the um, even on the damn TV shows that we did, you got smacked down for the first couple hours and then ECW afterwards. So not only are, is half the crowd going to leave, but besides that, we're heels for the mm -hmm. first first three quarters of the show were heels we run you know to promote our show they have the heels run in and fuck with the top baby face or whatever and get all the booze and they expect everyone to stay to watch us say you know here's what we want to show you after they were just throwing tomatoes at us that i didn't think that was a, a good idea personally well uh a jobson adds to your point he says you wrestled in front of a hundred people at the Pima City Fairgrounds during your WECW run, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely borrowed from the SmackDown pool to pay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Man. Good times. How about it? Holy yeah. smokes. Yeah, you know, in it, I always think about it too, like, when Taz debuted for WWE, it was extremely exciting as a fan because Kurt Angle was undefeated at the time. He goes out Royal Rumble 2000, and his music hits. The crowd goes absolutely insane at Madison Square Garden for him. And, like, I remember somebody telling Taz or somebody afterwards that, well, he's fucked because it wasn't Vince that got him that pop. It was Taz. You know, and yes. like you kind of think about it like, well, Vince always had that. Like if it wasn't his creation or if he didn't put a hat on a hat, like uh, maybe the the whole momentum wouldn't be behind you, so to speak. So, yeah, uh, no, that's I mean, if if a um, anyone listening somehow doesn't know, there's that's always been a belief was that if Vince creates you or WWE created you as a star, then they're going to get way behind you, stay behind you. Whereas if you created yourself and came in, you're looking at your, your run just being a run and you're done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Behind, wait, that sounded good. What'd I say? They got you back. I don't know. Running, you're done versus uh, you stay and and play. I don't know. I said I'll something. Play. Cool. We'll I'll, next. I'll go back and clip it up and make it make it <laughs> make me sound cool man I'll make you sound that's, awesome Rob. that's you know uh, but also when the when those guys do leave then they can't keep their names you know take them with them i saw or heard word recently that maybe that's changing i don't have any reason to believe that's true i got no evidence of that but you know if they that's why a lot of people um, when they sign their wwe contracts they're signing away their rights to that intellectual property and Someone like RVD, I was already RVD, so they couldn't really take that. Uh, they could share it with me for the term of the contract, which uh, continues now as far as having the rights uh, to make merchandise and the licensing deals. So, how concerned with, were you when you the second time you came to the when the invasion happened? Were you at all concerned them them changing your name, or you're like I'm already RVD? I was already showed up in WWE as RVD. Well, I thought for sure. You know, what's funny, I don't even think it went through my mind that I was already there, and so they would see me as established. I don't remember ever even feeling like they would have acknowledged that just based on my own inner fears or doubts or, or just the way that I understood them to do business. I thought for sure when I came in in 2001 and actually signed a three-year contract with them, I thought for sure that I was going to be erasing my past and I wasn't looking forward to that. So I wasn't happy about that at all. I had a lot of mixed emotions when it came to how I felt about uh, doing business there. And so when I found out I was part of the invasion, I was representing ECW, it really meant a lot to me. Like yeah. I, I'm adding depth to all the years that I put in so far, not erasing it. Big difference. Big difference.
Yo, Rob, we're going to take a quick time out just to say that this week's episode of One of a Kind with RVD is presented by Get Blitzed. Get Blitzed Lit A Nano Infused THC Serp is a premium cannabis infused serp formulated with nanotechnology for fast acting effects. And that advanced nanotechnology formulation allows for quicker onset and enhanced potency compared to regular THC serp. It's Delta 9 and legal, legal in all 50 states, every single one. And you have several serps to choose from, from Blue Raz to Key Lime Pie to Pina Colada to Tiger's Blood to Cherry to Grape. Just head to get-blitz.com, use promo code RVD, and get 15% off your whole order. Could be a bottle, could be a bundle, your choice. But yes, head to get-blitz.com, use promo code RVD, and it is by Mickey Ray Sinatra and Courtney. Take a look. Head to get-blitz.com, promo code RVD, get 15% off. It's one of a kind, baby. Um, oh, we have another uh, somebody's experience. I was at a show in Hammond, Indiana. One of the only people with an RVD 420 sign. Right when you came out, you saw my sign. I wonder if that was during the ECW era. Hammond, Indiana. I wonder if that, or that could have been like an indie show, I guess, maybe. Could have been, uh, or WWE even. You know, I don't know how many times I've been to Hammond, but um, I'm familiar with it. I don't know. I don't remember. Oh, yeah. I remember seeing your sign. Hey, there we go. <laughs> now I got it. You. <laughs> hey, I remember that. Um, let me see what else I wanted to talk about. I think Hammond, Indiana is also, if I'm not mistaken, where uh, Al Capone um, allegedly killed two of his guys that were planning to uh, overthrow him. That story is like retold so many times. You know, he, whenever they do a movie on him or whatever, they have like a different version of it. And also, supposedly, Tony Accardo got the name Tony Banners from doing the same thing, quite possibly the same event, whether it really happened or not. Uh, I don't know. It was by George and Selmy, uh, who's the other guy. Just two, two guys that really are just known for that. They were supposedly talking about setting um, Al up. And he has it. You've probably, anyone that's seen an, um, a movie like The Untouchables, I think, has it in it. El Capone, where they're all sitting around a dinner table, all the all the mobsters, and El's walking around giving a speech, and he ends up like whacking a guy in the back of the head, you know, while he's one of his own guys while he's sitting there, and that's that's a uh, that's a story that allegedly happened in Hammond, Indiana. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, where I grew up was Ridgeway, Pennsylvania. There was a town six miles away from us called Johnsonburg. And apparently they called that Little Chicago, and that's where Al Capone would stay at. He would stay at a hotel while he was there. For whatever reason, he was in Johnsonburg. I have no idea. They got around, man. They got around. And his house was in uh, Florida and Miami. It's amazing how much traveling those guys did way back in the day when traveling was such a pain in the ass and took forever. You yeah, know? yeah. It'd Vegas, just... New York, fucking Cuba. And a lot of the guys were international, you know, like in the 60s and 70s, Sam Giancana and a lot of those guys, they got, um, they're setting up casinos in, in like, what was the Bahamas, but then it was like in the, in the, in the Far East. And like, I can't imagine even how you could keep an eye on your money when it's way over there, unless you have so much manpower. But then again, you know, how do you trust them? I don't know. But, yeah, right. I don't know. Jeez. It's always fascinating me. Like, how they, I don't know how they do that. They take because one guy owns so many businesses and stuff, and, and when it's worldwide and it's all over, and you got, you know, you're talking to people in other countries, uh, Chile. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how. I can't imagine. You know, I couldn't even keep eyes on a business uh, in front of me. <laughs> right? No, it's a tough thing about it. <laughs> it is kind of remarkable to think that way too. Seth. Hey, we, Rob put you over here earlier if you're just tuning in. He put you over big time. Thanks for the 20 bucks. RVD, ever read The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy book? Seems like something you'd enjoy. Lance Storm turned me on to it on his blog back in the days. It's like super deep philosophy disguised as a sci-fi comedy. Easy read. Have you ever read those, Rob? No, I have heard of them. Um, I have heard of them and always. You know, they've always been... Um, something that comes up a lot but i haven't read them and, and another one that sounds like that too is like um something about a motorcycle seth probably knows but something about a 
I don't know. It's a uh, motorcyclers guide to the guy. There's something that mm. that I think is the same kind of thing philosophy, and it, the title makes it sound like it's something completely different. Just like a hitchhiker's guide kind of sounds different. But yeah. if anybody knows what I'm talking about, put it in the chat room. Is that the motorcycle diaries or whatever that was? Mm, no, that doesn't sound right. Or is that uh, a movie? I can't remember. You know, I thought the Hitchhiker's Guide to Galaxy might have been a, a movie, it but. Was. Uh, it was a movie? They turned it into a movie. I, I might have seen that, I, I think, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to go over the plot to, for me to to know. By the way, I saw Deadpool and Wolverine. It was a lot of fun. It was a blast. Cool. Yeah. I'm, yeah. yeah, I plan on trying to catch that at some point. Very funny. Oh, my God. A lot of gratuitous violence. It was... Oh, it's, you got your money's worth. Let me just say that. Yeah. You go there. Yeah, I'm sure. They... They know how to do it. You know, every time I see a Marvel movie, especially the Avengers, something really big, it just blows my mind. Like, you're like, what else? What could make it that movie better? I don't know. Yeah. You know? Maybe and some it, more tits and ass. Usually, tits and ass makes things better, but that's probably subjective. Well, I want to bring up this one. This is really yeah. funny. Um, I hope I can find it here soon. Oh shoot, Baccarat had a funny quote. I want to find it. Dang. It. Oh, here it is. This was in reference to your Miller Lite girls comment about like, well, like what's more appealing, seeing girls like, you know, doing that or whatever. And Baccarat said, I usually would bang my chick or rub one out before the show starts. So I didn't care about the tits and ass. So we just wanted to hear RVD's music. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. Uh, there's a uh, Yeah, I really, yeah, I really like hated. And I, and you know, I still am not a fan of, celebrities coming in i get it i get it but it still kind of hurts my heart a little bit when i have celebrities come in to a wrestling match you know katie's all excited that jelly roll came in and did a choke slam or or something and i'm like you know she knows i hate that kind of stuff but <laughs> um you know it, it, it beat, well i mean you know why if i can uh yeah it, it takes away from it like i it, we talked it about this credits, it history. discredits everything we do makes it look like anybody could do it uh and, and on top of that the you know I, there's always it's hard when you're in that state of mind to not feel like how much more is that motherfucker coming in getting paid right. to come in for his three seconds in the business when i'm here busting my ass every week and fucking making 500 bucks so there's there's always that too but i've just always hated it when you know jeremy piven comes in and does a crossbody because you know i mean that's that's inconsistent with the way i got trained what do we do me and uh sabu uh back in ecw uh had a situation where icp was coming in you know right. what i mean uh -huh. and, and they were actually our friends you know but we you know, they were still marks to us, kind of, you know, I mean, Joe was even in the business, you know, um, but I know, uh, I know that I, that I popped him because I heard about, it. I heard he wrote it in his book that I popped his eardrum with a, with a kick, you know, which, you know, I'm not saying that was any harder than a kick I would have done to any of the boys, but we didn't take it easy on them because they're um outsiders or, or or treat them like celebrities or, or whatever and so basically what i'm saying is if jeremy piven can handle the van daminator then then he might win me over but no you know what i mean like it, what we do uh is not easy uh for anybody it takes a long long time to uh to to learn the craft and i think that it sells it short when they have someone come in and and, and and they're able to pull off something, uh, you know, who, who would win a fight? You know, right. Jeremy Piven or the guy you did a crossbody to? My money's on the other guy. <laughs> and, and you could say, well, in wrestling, it's a lot of times like that, but not necessarily. You don't really know a lot of times, and that's something you, you assume, but a lot of times the it surprised you that the smaller uh, – guy is way tougher than the bigger guy a lot of times if it came to outside of the ring um street fight which is basically your goal is end this however you have to as soon as possible you know what i mean right right total different game total different game and you you, you can get some information watching them wrestle but 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 not as much as as you would imagine well 
So we talked about this before on like. But I'm sure on- any wrestler would kick Jeremy Piven's ass. That's it. And you know he called he called SummerSlam Summerfest in his promo too that night. He called it Summerfest. Fucker. You don't even do care about the business. You don't even care, Jeremy. <laughs> um, yeah, we talked about this. I think on a second episode because oh we we were talking about Bad Bunny, but then we also mentioned like I asked you I think. Well, what about when somebody like a legit athlete comes into play, like somebody like a Mike Tyson or Muhammad Ali? And that that's a little bit more makes sense, you know? But when you have a celebrity coming in there, and sure, you want to get eyes on the product, you want to get your highlight reel or whatever, and like that creates buzz or what have but you. But Muhammad so, Ali came in the box, you know what yeah. I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So like if a basketball player is coming in to play basketball, okay. Yeah, so but he's coming like, in to wrestle, you yeah. know, it's a little better that he's an athlete instead of an actor. It's a lot better. In fact, um, what's a really big? Um, is that Magic Johnson, the one that wrestled? Um, Shaq? Are you thinking Shaq? Yeah, Shaq. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, like I really like that match when I saw him. Yeah. And yeah, that I him in the the girl. It was him and Jake Cargill. Him yeah, Jake Cargill. I, mm-hmm. I thought that was really entertaining, and I thought, wow, he really like really did good, but. Obviously, you know, they worked on that. Um, cool, though. Um, and he's got some experience doing everything. That's a little better. But um, at the same time, you know, I got to give the advantage to the to the wrestler on the credibility side when it comes to wrestling. You know what's a great story is um, Jake Roberts. They had a program, I believe it was in Mid-South, where Muhammad Ali got brought in. And, like, he was supposed to take a punch from Muhammad Ali. And somebody with him, I think it was Jim. Who, who is this? Jake Roberts, Who's Jake the Snake. Girl. So I think it was like Jim Nord. I could be way off on that one, but he got punched by Muhammad Ali and like sold it like a motherfucker. Well, Jake gets punched by Muhammad Ali, get uh, sells it, but doesn't go off his feet. Like still doesn't sell it to him. Like keep, and that's Muhammad Ali. <laughs> so uh. it's like you know you want to add that yeah believability to your character and protect. A certain amount of us, so I completely. I Muhammad Ali was people. like, "I'll oh, wait till you get this next one." <laughs> right. <laughs> so, uh, Seth says, "Zen and the art of motorcycle repair" is the name. Thank of you. I knew he would know. No. Mm-hmm. Yep. You nailed it. I think um, I even have that one, but I haven't read it. It sounds neat. I think I, I, think I own it. it. Sounds neat, just but I like the title. Um, mm. Yeah. Instagram, a wrestling historian. Thanks for the Canadian two dollars. Were you Willie the Worker? If not, who was it? Willie Willie the Worker, Rob. I don't I don't even know that. Yeah, I never heard of him, so I I, I don't know, but it'd be a <laughs> solid no, but also I don't know for the second part. I yes. don't know where Willie the Worker is known from. Yeah, Willie the Worker. Uh well, explain the to that, I've always called Bill After Wonderful Willie. <laughs> Did and, you? Uh, yeah, I still do. I wonder Wonderful. if is he gonna be in Vegas this weekend? Do you know? I don't know. I don't expect him to. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, he usually just stays in the Northeast, I think, anyways. Doggies want to say hi. Oh, Here's... lovey. Oh. Look at that face. She's so cool. She's the best. And here's Barbie. Barbie's hanging out. Hello, yeah, Barbie. They both came up to say hi. Say hello, Barbie. Oh, you love you, baby. Look at those two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> easy, easy. <laughs> Lovey's freaking out a little bit. <laughs> um, Maddie, thanks for the Australian five dollars. I feel free now that I'm not being used by my former mate. He still lives here because he has nowhere to go. He's lucky for our ideology, or I'd pick a hand. Oh, that's what we were going to talk about this week was um, friends that have turned on, like that have, yeah, turned on you, like that long term friends or anything like that that have. Right, but let me, let me let's break this one down. I feel free now. I'm not being used. Oh, is it the same, same guy, right? Same guy. Maddie brought that up last week. Um, so he's bringing it up again, which, by the way, uh, appreciate that, Maddie, but I haven't forgot you. I know I was going to get to that before we close, but he's not being used anymore by a former mate. He still lives here because he has nowhere to go. He's lucky for, okay. Um, okay, I got you. So he's, uh, um, so Maddie is. Pleased that he didn't choose violence, and that's that's good. I'm glad that I could. Uh, and and yeah, we'll we'll talk about that too. Like, I, you want to 
we usually end with uh, a little. Uh, or do we got anything else? Well, we, gotta... we can do we can do a couple more uh, questions and stuff like that. But then oh. we, we can close it out, you know, with that. Okay. Um, let's see. I want to make sure. Right back, Maddie. We need to talk about that. Yeah, we'll we'll circle back around to that, Maddie. That, yeah, and congrats, me. congrats. You feel better. Look, I'll say that right now, yeah. and then uh, we'll talk. Talk when uh, I don't want to ignore anybody that's waiting. Yes. Or I could just talk about it. You can still bring them in, but no, because they might be talking about something different, right? Yeah, I'm not. So I think we covered all the super chats. I did want to get your thoughts on this. Was it? So, oh yeah. So we mentioned this um, earlier. Kind of little synchronicity here. Uh, Twenty years ago to the day, Rob uh, was SummerSlam 2004. And this was happened to be another card that you ended up not being on, but you were on a Sunday night heat match with Ray Dupree. That was your match that you had 20 years ago. So you see why I get those two confused. Yes. That's the synchronicity, bro. How, Dude, that's crazy. Yep. Yes. Yep. That is crazy. Yeah, the thing about synchronicity is you got to recognize it, and that's how you develop your relationship. The way that I developed it with the, with the universe, with Celestine and prophecy, we'll tell you about. But if you just let that blow over, like ah, no big deal. That's really the opposite of what you should be doing if you want it to happen more. It's more about engaging that moment and saying, "Whoa!" And if you get a little goosebumps, and that's cool. That's part of it. How about that then, Rob? So that's what you were thinking about when you were yep. thinking about WrestleMania. Was that match? Wow. And and you were going to bring it up anyway. I huh? was going to bring it up because it was twenty years ago to the day that that happened. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. Fucking so nuts. I remembered. I remember being bumped off WrestleMania and thrown on heat in a match with Rene Dupree. But that actually happened a different time, which we were going to talk about anyway. In case you aren't having a problem uh, following this, uh, what we're talking <laughs> about. But um, okay. So it was Val Venus and uh, and um, who? Oh my gosh. Who was it? Hold on. Uh, I gotta go back real quick. Val Venus Angle? and no, no, no not Kurt Angle. It was Val Venus and Lance Storm. Oh right, yep. Okay, Lance Storm. And twenty years ago today, it was SummerSlam instead of Mania. Yeah, and Rene oh, Dupree. Oh, okay. Wow, so, well, so crazy. I, I, I'm not um, 100 sure which, which time. Was the one where I went to Jr. and, and he said you had it. No, I think it was Mania. I just had, I had because I was like, I th but I could have been SummerSlam. I could have been like, I thought you said don't worry, we were gonna, I was, we we're gonna get paid the same as if we were on SummerSlam. Yeah. It could have worked that way, but either way, same situation, and you can bet I felt the same way. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I'm looking at the card here. Yeah, I felt that way. The whole time I was there, there was always reasons for your ego to feel insulted and i wonder if if there's anyone there that's exempt from that you know what i mean because even the ones that are really pushed hard well i don't know probably even then they probably feel slighted sometimes i i, I think they probably find a way to to make everyone feel like that sometimes but i used to feel like you know hey i'm getting a lot of cheers nobody notices like how come i'm not on the truck how come there's not a poster of me at the airport coming into, into New Orleans and it's everyone else. How come, you know, how come I'm not the one that's on the morning shows, uh, you know, that's promoting the show. And I always, always felt, you know, like um, I was more of like, uh, you know, not somebody's uh, favorite foot to put forward. Well, I think like some wrestlers, you think about that and they, they think that. But, like, you're somebody that would have a valid fucking case for all this shit because it's, like, <laughs> you think about immediately when you got put into WWE and the invasion angle, how over you were then, and you were such a, you were one of the hottest acts in all of wrestling. And so, like, for them not to make the most out of you and certain aspects of it all, it's just, like, kind of fucked up. Oh, you're, squ <laughs> you're <laughs> listening and you're not watching. He's squishing Katie. Is that Katie behind you there? Or is that D? Hey, hey, what's up, Katie? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but you have a valid case, I think, every time because it's like you're a fucking Hall of Famer <laughs> and all that stuff. So, and, and, you know, that's why, like, circumstances, even before 
I had gone through a lot of spiritual growth to really own the values that I do now. Even back then, the circumstances wouldn't allow my ego to get too big to where I feel like I'm unfireable, like a lot of the guys seem like nowadays, you know. I got fired. Can you believe that? Like me, because they fill your head up with all these plans, you know, of things they're going to do with you, and then you believe it, and then they fire you, and then you're surprised. But, you know, after it happens so many times, you tend to, you know, or at least I, you know, I believe it when I see it, you know. And the whole time I was there, they never gave me any reason to believe that that they um, couldn't do without me, you know, right. ever. Right. Yeah, it's wild to think, though. It is. Uh, Maddie did chime in. We talked about this before, RVD versus Cena. Uh, I don't know if you saw this, Rob, but um, Cena said that he's going to do 36 dates with the BE, so uh, for his retirement tour. So, hey, it would be nice to see you on one of those. Yes, it would, and I am familiar with it. I have been asked about it a few times, you know. Um, I didn't know it was 36 dates. I did know that he was doing a retirement tour. It'd be awesome if he happened to stop in Philadelphia during that time. Um, if not, then I have no reason to think that they would be interested in something like that. I certainly would. And I said it somewhere because I've seen it reposted several times, you know, that RVD says he'd love a match with Cena or something to that extent. That'd be awesome. Of course I would. And, uh, you know, we, we, we'd crush it. You know, I'm, I feel uh, phenomenal. AJ didn't make that up. But um, I don't, you know, they got my number. Let me put it that way. I don't, as I was just discussing, you know, I never had a reason to believe that uh, uh, or to know how highly they thought of me if they did. Or at least... If there was a lot of reasons for me to believe that they they thought highly of me, there was also a lot of contradicting things that would happen to to uh, bring my ego down and also my beliefs that hey, maybe they don't give a shit about me or they just think I'm here to enhance other people. Uh, I don't know, but because of all of those, I have no idea uh, or no reason to think they'd be too excited about. What a lot of fans would be excited about in this case but i'd definitely be down for it and uh physically i'm definitely down so physically yeah. mentally spiritually it'd be awesome dude yep. and like you like you said too you guys could do that you said you could do that match that you did at one night stand with him Still. could do a double retirement match i don't give a fuck. hell yeah fucking and that's fine why I'm out there because i don't care enough <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Maddie says, just wanted to say, Rob wasn't pushed ever, but Rob, RVD is the most over. Uh, Maddie's hanging with us. I appreciate it, dude. Yes. Greg Jacobson. He says, that is hey. a story. By, by, by the way, that is, I mean, you know, not that I wasn't pushed, but I do feel a lot of times that I, my um, platform that I reached of fan appreciation i feel like a lot of that was done in spite of the agenda absolutely absolutely even looking and no offense to like so I'm, i was looking at the wrestlemania 19 card and no offense to big show or a train but that's those are the two guys who fought the undertaker that that night at wrestlemania he had a handicap match i would have much rather seen rvd versus undertaker and i think a lot of people could say that <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how I felt a lot of times being in that equation. It would be like, you know, th this guy because somebody decided, yeah, we're going to push him for a few weeks and see if he gets over. If it doesn't get over, then screw it. We'll just throw it out. But but I would never forget that, you know, like you see what you know, what you had me do in front of people out there. You know, I felt like that a lot of times. Yeah. But, I, you know, I mean, I know I, I know I'm a good seller, but, y you know. Fucking, uh, I do more than just get my ass kicked, you know? <laughs> right. You kick ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Greg Jacobson says, hey, RVD, any fl funny Blue Meanie stories? Thanks. Blue Meanie is joining One True Sport Network, too, by the way. Uh, his show, I believe, is going to go live tomorrow. So tune in to One True Sport TV. And check out Mind of Meanie. Yeah, any good Meanie stories there, Rob? Um, 
Unfortunately, I can't think of any uh, many stories. You know, um, great dude. Um, I didn't I haven't been around him a whole lot, uh, and now I see him at conventions and and stuff, and um, and I see a, a, a lot of the guys that are from ECW. Now I see them as more of a uh, I don't know, uh, um, with a linear vision, you know, horizontally, whereas mostly I, if I knew them from the dressing room, my ego told me back then, you know, that I was above them. And, and also, you know, that is how you treat people that are, uh, that have been doing it longer than you or more over or whatever. You know what I mean? You do kind of carry their bags or work your way up to get in. But that kind of mentality makes me think of how different it is now. Cause like when I would see like him or Stevie, uh, um, or, you know, any, the whole BWO, like you mean Sabu, of course, weren't behind the gimmick of putting other companies over and, and, and making fun of them. But it was, you know, I, the fans loved them and they were over and now I get it more than I did then. But, um, but I, I feel like, um, like back then, it was there was more of a, a looking looking not looking down like in a disrespectful way but more of more of a feeling of like um i'm above you hey i should get the first class seat if there's only one not you get up you know like you you get used to that and now it seems ridiculous to me because now like when i see mimi it's just like oh you know hey, he's just a, a dude that um had uh, a job you know, just like me, you know, he's a guy that does what I do for a living. And I, and I, and I see it more, more that way, which is like not the way to see it. If you're, if you live in a dressing room. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I, don't I, any, I don't have any stories that I could think of to, uh, to, to share with them. You know, um, I, I, I can't say he had a friend who runs the, um, exotica shows and did the first uh 420 show in new jersey and i think maybe there was a follow-up or two or whatever but that came through mimi for anybody that saw me or katie uh we did some appearances there and it was Mimi that reached out and said hey i got this friend that wants your your info to which a lot of times that's how booking happens you know they want to they want to book you whatever sure i'll give them my email whatever and Boom, 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 met the other guy. And that's how uh, we we um, got hooked up with doing the Exoticas. Or is it Erotica? I always call it, I always fuck the name. I think it's Erotica. No, it's Exotica. Yeah, I think you said that before. It's Exotica. Probably it no, has shut up. I had it right the first time. Damn it. Turn it. Yeah. Turn it. That's not a very funny story or even a really good story, but um, good dude. Everyone knows the story about him and Bradshaw and the ECW. Uh, I don't have anything to add to that, you know, but of course I was uh, on his side when I found out what was going on. Uh, but I didn't really know all the facts. I just knew I was, my heart was with ECW. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm an ECW guy. And, uh, well that, um, yeah, I know him and, uh, Bradshaw since made up a long time ago and all that. Yeah. Everybody does. We all grow. And it's, that's, that's part of like what I'm saying, you know, like I, I think, of, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Timber. <laughs> I think of that like when I when I see Stevie now, like a lot of times. Well, first off, I think of when I broke his face, you know, because it's you know again something I'm not proud of, so that sticks out in my mind, you know, right off the bat. But um, but also I think of that, you know, like how how that relationship was in the dressing room and how how that whole mentality that seems more like almost like fraternity to me, you know what I mean, like. Like I, like, I don't know. It's weird. Like, obviously, when I was young, I would have been happy to, and I still am. You know, I carried someone's bags. I think it was B. Brian Blair. You know, I grew oh. up watching him. Like recently, <laughs> like last year, I saw him at the airport. Just happened to be in Charlotte. You know, at the same time, and and his bag was hurting him. And I was like, dude, can I get your bag for you? And I was just like, I still feel like a young guy around that whole generation. I do. I still feel like a kid because I feel like, you know, if they said, hey, do a backflip or take a bump, I'd be able to do it. So, I mean, I don't know, you know, how to feel like uh, old yet. But um, anyway, 
it, it, it seems like like back in the ECW days that um, me and Sabu's egos were, were up there. And that happens when you're – it has to have. you got to believe in yourself in order to do that. But it's a, it's a strange thing to try to explain through a stoic philosophical perspective. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's true, too, and you mentioned, like – you kind of have to have a bit of an ego to like survive in the business at that point. And to get to the level you do, you have to, you have to, Mm -hmm. no doubt about that. Um, I did get business. I did get blackout drunk with Meanie at his bar in Philadelphia. That's he has a bar. Well, it's not, it's a bar he frequents. It's McCusker's. And then they had Meanie mania there during a mania weekend. It (laughs) was a really big turnout and stuff like that. Yeah. That's where he got, he got married there too. Al Snow married him there. Oh yeah, I saw some. I didn't know Al did, but yeah, I saw some uh, some news of that. Yeah, pretty neat. Pretty neat. Yeah. So, guys, yeah, if you're on One Tree Sport, tune in tomorrow. You will see Blue Meanie uh, in his show. Um, before I forget to, I also wanted to plug merchandise. We got some new RVD T-shirts at OneTrueSport.com. All the profit goes to me and RVD. So if you buy them there, they go straight to them, straight to Rob, straight to me. So. Go scan that QR code. We got the classic RVD ECW shirt. Uh, we got the new RVD Dragon shirt that I made. And then we have a 420 that's a, a reminiscent to the, the gas station, which is a cool little design that we have, too. So scan that. Take a look. We got some hats. We got a whole bunch of other stuff on there for Rob, too. So uh, good products there. And we have a Fonzie store, too. So a lot of Fonzie stuff going on, too, if you want to take a look at that. All right. Boom. Let's see what else I want to cover. Uh, Maddie, I think, had another question, maybe. Oh, he just had some comments. Have you seen the Sabu living with Joe Henry video yet? Have you seen that one yet, I guess? Well, no, I'm going to have to look it? that up. So I guess there I must be. Were they together for some They reason? must have been. I, I'll have to take a look. I'll, I'll do some research and, and find it. And if I see something, I'll send it to you, Rob. I, I'm taking it that people are loving this. Joe Henry. Great. It is true? a lot of fun. Yeah. 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 Cool. He was just on NXT too. He's super over. He's like the hottest act right now in TNA and the hottest act basically on NXT too. Cause he's jumping over there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Cool. Here's an interesting one. Maddie adds too. Can we get a movement for RVD versus Cody bong babies? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you, you, you know what it is. I think uh, the way that I understand the way the business runs, and uh, you know, ownership's changing. Maybe perspectives probably have to change with that. But I've always um, had the understanding that that WWE really wants to invest in. Not who's here today, but who's going to be here for the next 10 years. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. And I think thereby, someone like RVD, you know, like when I did my return in 2013 and 2014, um, it was there, you know, like to, to work with the young guys to give them a rub. Um, and then, you know, you know, for for a run, however long the contract was, to go in and do that, and then go out. <clears throat> um, but as far as bringing me in uh, back back then, I, like full time, um, I don't think anybody was interested in that. You know, me, me first off. But I think that it's it's because of that because they sign young guys um, <clears throat> and they they plan on tomorrow and on the future and that's the way they want to see it go big picture long plans and so that's something to keep in mind and that's why you know like you, like aew they'll bring rvd and it's like a special treat or surprise or not a surprise but it, it you know it's just it's a special moment kind of happy thing but he also has a bunch of talent on contract um, and he's hoping those guys, uh, the younger guys, will, will, will be there for a long time. And But he's, you know, where he's willing to do that, he's willing to do a lot of things that uh, not only would some people say, would argue with as being the right thing to do, but also, you know, like WWE, as big as they are, would, uh, from what I understand, 
maybe not be inclined as much to see the value in that. I don't know, but they bring celebrities in to do one-offs and shit like that. So that's kind of a contradicting thought too. But overall, I think that's where their focus is. Yeah, you kind of see that that trend going of like, hey, like, what can we bring in NXT? Uh, some established acts, but then they have a lot of the younger talent there that obviously want to try to get some experience with and move up to the main roster and all that kind of thing. But there is some times too where these everything has kind of been open-minded it seems a little bit more too hopefully i don't know i'd love to see like somebody like you get put back in the mix and you know we've seen other guys and kind of people reestablish themselves or come back into the w fold a little bit so yeah, it would be awesome i'd love you and cody I'd, i mean you and Cena would be great obviously so um before we close it all out before we get to rvdology let's do a little housekeeping when it comes to some of our advertisers that we want to thank uh, first off, thanks to Blue Chew. Try Blue Chew for free. You can use promo code RVD and get your first uh, package free. Only pay $5 shipping. Go to bluechew.com and promo code RVD. Another sponsor we're very happy to have is Get Blitzed. Uh, you also use promo code RVD. Go to get-blitz.com. It's Get Blitz Lit Nano Aid Infused THC Serp. It is 100% legal in all 50 states. I have the Blue Raspberry. I just took some yesterday, and let me say it is very effective. So uh, take a take a try with that if you like that. And the flavor is great too. I like that a lot. Uh, Delta Nine. Scan that QR code if you're watching, or go to get-blitz.com and use promo code RVD get 15% off. Thanks to Mickey Ray Sinatra and Courtney for doing all that stuff. And finally, we have our other sponsor, Via, and the Via Hemp Company. And let me say that have a whole bunch of different gummies that you can choose from, uh, from CBD to THC. Um, I've tried both. I've tried the Elevate, which helps you keep focus, and that has THC in it. and uh, Very effective as well. Uh, really, really works, and is, it's a good time. And also, I will say I like the, the CBD one, which is the Flow State, and that one's really good. Uh, it really does help my attention. I went actually before uh, watching the show or doing the show here tonight, and um, I feel focused and dialed in. Uh, that has lines made in it too. So take a look at that. Go to Via, use that uh, code RVD, and use the link below that's in the description here of this podcast. So cool, cool, cool. Rob, is there anything you want to? The lines made that I'm taking, by the way, because um, because you know I did a little research and they said you should get it from made uh from the fruit of the uh of the of the plant and then also that the extract is the best and and so um so what i got was the liquid sublingual drops because i read that's the uh, the best or, or what i understood anyway from all the research i did it tastes horrible it's and it starts yeah it's like it, it, it's like it never seems like a good idea that's the same thing sometimes with the kratom powder it's like sometimes yeah you know it's just not appealing i don't really want to taste that you know so so that's a shame about that but oh man i also have lion's mane capsules and shit like that but by the way um i'm always um consistently saying that the uh kratom capsules don't seem to work nearly um as good as as the powder and and i will open them up and take the powder out and then they're fine but to experiment i put um a bunch of capsules probably five or seven um in a glass of water and it took 25 minutes for the wrapping of the capsule to actually dissolve i know it's water and maybe your stomach acids aren't a fair comparison but i don't i think that that keeps the powder from getting into your system in fact i'm i'm almost i mean i'm sure although as i always say everyone is different you know everyone gets different reactions but for those uh people like myself that have a hard time with the capsules you know those capsules just don't uh, release uh what they're holding in time and it bypasses too much of your system so just thought i'd share that experiment with you i put them in water um and then i drank it but it took i did it two not two days and it you know because first it was 20 minutes it wasn't long enough none of them dissolved and um and then i did it for 30 minutes and guess what half of them were dissolved but anyway, dude, uh, 
This weekend, I am in Edmonton, Canada. Ooh, hey. at, at the mall, at the biggest mall in North America. Yeah, pretty fucking big. It's huge amusement park and all kinds of stuff. So, so that'll be cool. And there's a wrestling show there um, also besides the RVD signing. So um, that's uh, Saturday. Uh, so um, just like always, you can look at robvandam.com and find that information. And then next week is the Cauliflower Rally Club where you'll be down. I think that's yeah. – uh, through Wednesday. Do you know the schedule of events there? Because I have. I wish I did. I was trying to look up uh, at it on the website. Um, it's no. I don't know the lineup of events. Do you know if there's a dinner two nights instead of one night this time? It's usually one night the last night, and I usually go to that. Yeah. I that he's obligated to two dinners right now, and um, I don't. And there's a lot more people that I that I'm familiar with that are getting awards. Uh, next week than usual too. The Dudley Boys are gonna get an award. Sting, Jim yep. Ross, Fonzie, Kurt Angle's gonna be there too. That's right. He's getting the award that I got. The Luthes. Um, oh, how about that? That's sweet? Yeah. Um, Pretty cool. Yeah, I don't know what the lineup. So okay, well here's the lineup of who's getting awarded. The Iron Mike Mazurki Award going to Sting. The Luthes Art Abrams Award goes to Kurt Angle. Even McLean's getting an award, the the Wild WoW Promoter. Oh, the Wild WoW Promoter, no way. And, and the Inventor of Glow, by the way. And yes, okay, yeah, the Carrie Carrie Law Carl Laurel. Oh my God, that's easy for me to say. Carl Law Lar. Oh my God, Independent Promoter Award. And the Jim Ross. Hey, guess what? The Jim Ross Announcers Award is going to Jim Ross. <laughs> uh, are you serious? That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Women's Wrestling Award is going to Alice in Danger. If you don't know her, that is Steve Carino's sister. Uh, Tag Team Award is going to the Dudley Boys. Men's Wrestling Award is going to Marcus Alexander Buff Bagwell, who I think, if nobody's posing as him, is actually in our chat Ooh. right now. He says, RVD, if that is Buff. Hey, Buff. I have to hit him up with the Buff. See you next yeah. week if that's you, dude. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Buff is the stuff. Um, let me make sure I got everybody. Oh, Lucha Libre Award going to Negro, Negro Casa. Oh, that almost got me in trouble. Uh, Red Bastion Award yeah. going to Lori McGee Hurst. Independent Wrestling Award going to Night Train, Gary Jackson. And hey, Charlie Smith Referee Award going to Fonzie, Bill Alfonso. Ooh. Can't wait. Can't wait. Real Award going to Todd Bridges. James C. Melby Historian Award going to Jason Presley. And a Courage Award is to be announced. So lots lined up. I wish I knew the dates, uh, which, which one is the dinner here. I was trying to look at some of the stuff, but I cannot find it. By the it. way, when I got that award at the Cauliflower Rally Club, that Luthes Award, I remember um, when I was standing up there on the podium giving my speech, I remember specifically looking at Kevin Sullivan. Really? You know? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Up to him. Yeah. I said, uh, hey, you guys could have warned me about Ron Slinker, which he knew what I meant. That was like an inside thing for him and for Brian Blair, the Tampa boys. They knew. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Brian seems like a very nice person, too. I, I was interacting with him a little yeah. bit. Yeah. He's the president of it. He runs it. He runs the whole shebang. Yeah. yeah I'm Super dude. Should be a fun week. Or, yeah, fun week, I guess it will be during the week. So, yeah, exciting for that. But, guys, check out Rob this weekend if you're in Edmonton and uh, say how do you do him. So, he, he will be there uh, this cool. coming weekend here. Um, cool. let's, let's address, let's address Maddie. Maddie asked me yes. last week, he said, uh, have you ever, um, he, he was either, have you ever had a friend use you or have you ever been used by a friend? I don't remember ex which way it was worded. I think it means the same thing. And what does that mean? You know, used usually has like a negative stigma attached to it. You know, you feel used, but it's not always negative. So first off, we got to define it. You know, um, I need a couple of big guys that can handle themselves tonight. You got anybody I can use? That's not a bad thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, hey, um, I don't want my mom to see me when I when we cross the yard, man. Can I use you as a shield? You're being a friend. I'm using my friend as a shield. It's not always bad. You know, sometimes it's just a level of taking advantage which again sounds bad it's not always 
taking advantage of, of somebody's qualities, taking advantage of somebody's skills. It could be bad. It could be, you know, like, hey, he makes her cook for him all the time and slave in the kitchen because she makes great food, whatever. But it could also be, uh, it could also be, you know, like, hey, um, when I'm around the sheik, I'm going to take advantage of, uh, uh, of his, um, of his memory and get some good stories from him. You know, I'm not going to, that's not a bad thing, right? So it really just depends. So when you say you've ever been used by a friend, of course, we all have. We've been used in good ways. And uh, sometimes it's in a bad way. So I'm going to assume this was a bad way where you felt um, taken advantage of again in a bad way. And I can definitely relate to it. A few times pop into mind um, where I was taken advantage of, like, um, mm, Let's see. I, I had something in mind. Well, I'll skip the first one then and go to the go to the second one. Um, I had a uh, couple of guys. Um, I'm trying to think of his name, Justin Sampus and Jesse Daly. And I met with uh, Justin about starting my own cannabis line, and talking to the guy it's not like there wasn't any red flags he seemed like a fast talker uh he seemed like more of a sales guy um but i thought maybe that'd be kind of a guy to do business with you know but they acted like they were friends jesse and him have been partners for a long time they had their own cbd line and they wanted to do an rvd line of cbd i didn't know that they were going to be funneling money from one to the other the entire time uh, they didn't want me to know about that. But in the meantime, these guys acted like they were friends. Were they my favorite people to be around? No. But at the same time, we all had a common goal, a common agenda. We wanted, we had big plans. We wanted to um, make money and grow our company, make uh, cannabis accessible for a lot of people. Um, so dude, Justin would be at my house. He'd be like working out in my gym with me. Both of those guys were at my wedding. Um, every Tuesday we would have a talk, you know, about the money. Money's coming in, you know, is there enough to start paying ourselves yet or keep investing it, you know? Well, we're close, we're close. They were already paying themselves. They just didn't want to tell Uncle Sam because when an owner pays themselves, that's considered profit. And they were scumbags and, and, and very crooked, and it took forever to get Jesse to even – uh, straighten the books out enough so that he could present them to my accountant, um, which is how we eventually led to finding this out. Um, did I feel used? Fuck yeah. These guys were making money, getting paid off of my name, knowing that I'm not. I'm not getting paid off it. That's happened. That's happened a lot of times. Uh, what, what really what really will get you, if you haven't had this happen yet, Hopefully you never will. Seems like about half the people do. But when you have somebody that is your closest person and you do everything for that person and, 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 and commit your whole life to that person and become a couple and are married and that person ends up uh fucking you over and, and leaving and taking as much money as they possibly can way more money than they ever would have made on their own stupid self because they don't have any skills or any talent or whatever i mean everybody's different i'm just thinking about my specific uh, situation when i <laughs> read those colorful details there but when you get to experience something like that and then when the person that you committed everything to um ends up being the person that also fucks you over the biggest i think that probably tops your uh your your buddy you know um using you to to get to uh, your your girlfriend's sister or something like that you know there's all kinds of different levels it does happen um uh and and here's here's the deal with that um, it hurts and we can't, we don't have control over what happens to us. What we do have control over is how we react 
to it. And that's true with everything. So you're in control of how you react. It's not someone else. You can't say, it's your fault, man. You knew I get pissed every time you call me that. No, you're still in charge of the way you react to being called that. Don't fool yourself. Don't kid yourself. Let's be honest. And because of that, that's where your power is. So a lot of people, they get hurt. They don't want to get hurt again. So they don't put themselves in situations ever where they could get hurt again. And by that, that means, you know, um, it's really sad that my dog died. I'm never going to have a dog again. I got broken up with my girlfriend. I'm, I'm never going to date a girl again. I just want to be on myself. Um, you know, my buddy fucked me over. Fuck the world. So people uh, do that. And they say, DTA, don't trust anybody. And what RVDology says to that is that's one way you can live that way. A lot of people do. And I'm, who am I to say what's wrong for them? But I don't believe in that way. I think that you're depriving yourself of future love if you're never going to love again because you had your heart broke. And how are you going to debate against that? That is what's happening. You're not going to allow yourself to feel some really good emotions. And so, therefore, are you giving yourself a better quality of life by sheltering yourself in? Yeah, you don't ever leave the house. And, and then, you know, no one's ever going to fuck with you. True, true. But you also have your life to live. And you only have one life to live. So I would say don't let this stop you from doing what you want to do. And don't let being hurt stop you from being the person that you want to be. And that's what happens to a lot of people. It changes, uh, it changes people. You know, every experience kind of changes us because now our perspective is that much bigger because it's added that new experience to it. Therefore, um, we're looking at it with a little more experience, a little different perspective than we had before. That's a good thing. That's why experience is the best teacher. You get experience uh, firsthand from yourself or you get experience second or third hand from other people's experience, hearing stories, reading about something and just applying what you can learn from that towards yourself. I say um, if, if somebody hurts you, then what happened was you probably are forced to realize that you don't have what you thought you had. You have something that's different from what you thought you had. You thought you had this relationship. You could completely trust forever. That person would never do anything for you. Or you don't even need to worry about it. You never thought about it. But really what you got is this person that isn't flawless. It's a person that could make mistakes. It could be something that's forgivable. But just don't forget. And if it's uh, uh, big enough and bad enough then, you know, maybe you shouldn't uh, be friends or, or maybe you should make that. But if it's big enough to where that is the focus of your whole relationship, then, then, then that's pretty big. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. You know what I mean? Um, my evil ex will always be my evil ex. Why? Because she completely flipped after spending all my money for 18 years told her lawyer and wrote all this stuff down in a complaint so that she could get paid as much money as possible. She said, and this was uh, what, 2018, 2019, said there's no reason I should, shouldn't should go back uh, to WWE and work full time so I can pay her for the rest of her life. There's, I'm faking the concussion symptoms that were um, exploited in, 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 in Headstrong. Um, I'm uh, addicted to drugs. I'm addicted to weed. Um, and, and all these ridiculous fake expenditures that we used to go on these vacations and we got brand new cars all the time. Because she chose to go out that way, that will always be the thing that comes up when I think about her. And so she's always going to be my evil ex and I don't want anything else from her. I hope I never see the bitch again with abyss with, um, 
Well, I mean, there was there was Joe Bruce. Who was the other guy that I said I I, I heard? Oh, with Rhino, you know, there won't always be. You know, it's always going to be something. Maybe it might be the first thing that stands out. But I love Rhino. It's not going to be the only factor to our whole relationship. If it is, then that's fine. You know, move on and learn from it. You are going to get hurt again. Be more ready for it next time. It's okay to pull back your trust a little bit. You know, uh, you don't get to know for sure that anybody will never hurt you. You don't get to know that. That's not part of life. You do not get to know any more than you get to know what happens after you die. You don't know. So, you know, doesn't mean you can't trust people. You're going to get hurt. And, and you know, it. sometimes it takes time. It always takes time. There's grievances. And sometimes you're not ready to get another dog yet or whatever. That's fine. And there's no need to rush anything. But in the bigger picture, our ideology says DTA is something that uh, I don't do. I like to look at good in people. I like to trust people. But you know what? Trust them a certain amount. You know, there's a lot of people that I would trust to do me a lot of favors that I wouldn't trust to stay in my house over the weekend when I'm not here. Yeah. There's limits to your trust. Look at it that way. And, you know, if, if it's something that you're not that you can't forgive the person because this this uh, thing that, that happened is bigger than your relationship with them then that's how it's going to be, and, and that's fine too. But just remember, our ideology says don't let being hurt change you from being the person that you want to be, period. I love it, Rob. It's great stuff. I it Too, I think about, like, when you have those moments of hurt or you feel like even, like, moments of, like, oh, man, like, this person really, like, demeaned or, like, I feel shame almost or something like that, just be aware of those thoughts and be like, yeah, that's a – feeling that I'm having it doesn't but it doesn't necessarily mean something that you could have controlled or anything like that this is this person doing their own thing and this is the decision they're making you only can control what you can control and uh just learn it's from good, it and, yeah. good job not telling them to pick a hand if uh if that's not the best move it's it <laughs> it's seldom it seldom is the best move but sometimes it is you know I was talking to Katie earlier and we were talking about getting ripped off by promoters and I remembered two different times when I was really young where the promoter doesn't have money for me uh, I've already wrestled I'm trying to get paid just like the rest of the card and the guy's telling me he's gonna mail me a check so I'm thinking there's maybe a 20% chance that I'll get the check in the mail but if I beat the dude's ass, there's no way I'm getting the check. So <laughs> should I beat his ass because he fucked me over and he's probably not going to pay me anyway? Or should I just hope that the check arrives and go home? And that's happened a couple of times to me when I was, uh, when I was younger. Uh, and it was because, you know, I really wanted the 150 bucks, <laughs> you know? And so <laughs> otherwise, you know, if I didn't care about the money, then I would have just beat the dude's ass and I would have felt better about it. Um, one of the times was a real famous one. This dude, his name was Joe Lake and he ran this uh, show in Detroit, an indie show that was like a uh, WrestleMania show. He had like everybody, I think Hercules was on that and uh, Jim Neidhart and Greg Valentine. I think Honky Tonk Man, me and Sabu. He just had so many people on it. And then when it came time to get paid, he stiffed everybody. Um, the, the, the way I remember it, Jim Neidhart uh, the next day, wouldn't get on his plane to go home and instead went with the guy to his work um, and, and to where his mom works to get his money. And the other guys got it right. Who could got it right from the, uh, the box office, you know, before, before that emptied out. And these guys were serious about, Hey man, I, uh, we're not, we didn't just fucking leave our homes and come here and work our asses off so you could fucking uh, be entertained. You know, you owe us, but you know, it's a dirty business. It, you know, it's sometimes that happens. I try to avoid it. You yeah. gotta avoid it. Gotta avoid it. Yeah. Bonus Man. story because I know people remember that. The other boys remember that were there. Joe Lake. I think Barbarian might have been there. And there's so many guys. I'm gonna ask Sabu about that and uh, see if he remembers because Sabu was the one I think that <clears throat> they gave him my number. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
But anyway, yeah, dude, um, just keep keep moving forward, dude. Keep your goals, keep your values in mind, and uh, and be somebody that you want to be. We all have that power. He says thanks, RVD. Yeah, he's really appreciative, man. He's a big time listener here on that, so and we appreciate the question. Good stuff and great, great RVD. RVD is the best part of the show, I think. It's uh, RVDology, I mean, uh, and it's uh, always very yeah. informative. So. Good stuff. Appreciate you, Dom. I appreciate you, Van Dam fam. Mm-hmm. Be back here next week for some more. That's it. Guys, tune in. Hey, any suggestions, by the way? Uh, I like that, you know, uh, when you, if you have something specific that you'd like to hear me uh, talk about uh, in the next week, you know, start making that a routine. If I can pick it up. Yeah. Questions. Guys, so, always make suggestions for RVology and stuff like that. If there's like a life situation that you have going on or something that you would want to handle a different way or get a different perspective on, RVD will provide that for you. Just shoot us a message on social media or uh, get it cooking in the chat here. You don't even have to freaking do a super chat. You can just drop it in there and I can keep my eyes peeled for it. Or if you don't want to, fuck it. I have three or four things I could talk about tonight anyway. But (laughs) talk a lot, just like always. Katie and... uh, D are, are like, okay, the show's long enough. Let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. Yeah. Let's wrap it up. So we will, yeah. guys, see you next week here on One of a Kind. Next week. With RVD. Bam. Bam. Cool, cool. <laughs> One of a Kind with Rob Van Dam is recorded in front of a live studio audience.